In today's video, I'm going to be sharing how to do the V-stitch ripple. This classic gives a beautiful lacy effect and is a simple one row repeat. So once you get the hang of this sequence, you're going to be zooming right through your project. This is ideal for stash busting. You can have a lot of fun playing with different striping effects, but if you have a self-striping yarn that you've been wanting to use, this stitch works really well with that too. Along the video, I'll be sharing some tips that really help me keep on track with placement. Sometimes that can be a bit tricky. And if you're interested in how to straighten the ripples on top and bottom, you'll find the tutorial at the very end of the video. I've added timestamps along the progress line so you can jump to your point of interest. So let's go. A quick note about measuring. Because we're creating peaks and valleys, you'll want to keep this in mind as you're creating your chain count. With my hook and yarn for the sample that I made, my sample reduced by a couple of inches after I completed that first row. So not a whole lot, but just keep that in mind as you're planning out your width. To create the chain, we're going to be working in multiples of 14 plus six at the very end. So that means you're going to be working up your width by blocks of 14, 14, 14, 14, until you get to the width that you want. And then at the very end, you'll add an additional six for your turning chain. One thing I would highly recommend is to use stitch markers as you're creating your chain. This really helps a lot to keep on track with your chain count, and then we'll use them again as a guide in row one. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, Add your stitch marker into that last chain, and then continue on. When you've reached the width of your blanket, add your extra six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. For this entire tutorial, we're going to be working a lot with V-stitches. A V-stitch is just a double crochet chain one, double crochet into the same stitch. And that's going to give you a V effect. The sequence is super easy. We're going to begin with a valley or a dip, create a side, peak, side, valley, and so on all the way across, finishing with a valley. To create our first valley, add a double crochet into the sixth chain from the hook. One, two, three, four, five, six. Quick little tip here, it will be the stitch in front of your stitch marker. Double crochet. So we've created our first valley or dip. Now we're going to create our first side. We're going to skip two chains, one, two, and in the third chain, we're going to create our first V stitch. Double crochet. chain one, and double crochet back in the same stitch. There's your very first V stitch. So we've created our valley and our side. Now it's time to create a peak. And to create a peak, we're just going to be adding three V stitches into the same stitch. Skipping two again in that third stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch, chain one, double crochet into the same stitch. That is your first peak. So what you should see here is four double crochets with three chain spaces in between. One, two, three. Essentially, three V stitches. Because we're working so many stitches into one chain there, this will get a little tight on you. Just try to stretch it back out so that you can see your chain again. Otherwise, it's going to be really easy to lose count. Now it's time to do another side. We're working our way back down, skipping two chains. Let's do another V stitch, working into the third stitch. 
That's a double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So we did our peak, our side, and now it's time to do our first real full valley. To do our valley, we're essentially doing an upside down V. To create that appearance, we're going to do two double crochets together. Skip two chains in that third stitch, we're going to do half of a double crochet. Going into the stitch, pull your yarn through, yarn over, and pull through two. Do not complete your double crochet. Skip one chain and working into the next stitch, repeat the process. Yarn over, go into the stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. You'll have three loops on your hook. Now we're going to join those two double crochets together, yarn over and pull through all three loops. If you notice again, we worked right before that stitch marker. That's always a good guide to see that you're on track. Skipping two chains again, one, two, it's time to work our next side. Into that third stitch, we're just going to create our V stitch. We're back to a peak, skipping two chains. Again, we're working three V stitches into one. So that's going to be a double crochet. Chain one, double. Chain one, double. Chain one, and double. Just double check that you have four double crochets with three spaces in between. One, two, three, four. Great. Back to a side, skip two, create your V stitch into the third chain. We're ready for our next valley, skipping two chains, Create half of a double crochet. You should have two loops on your hook. Skipping one chain, we're going to work into the next stitch. Remember that stitch marker helps us to keep on track. It'll be right before that stitch marker. We're going to create our next double. Going into that stitch, pull through two. You've just completed two half double crochets. Now we're going to yarn over and pull through all three stitches. Upside down V, two double crochets together. You're just going to continue the sequence all the way across, working a valley, side, peak, side, valley, and so on. When you come to the end of your chains, you want to see a peak and a side with five chains left. We're going to complete our last valley or half of a valley. To do this, skip two as usual and work half of your double crochet into that third stitch. Skip one and in that very last chain, you're just going to repeat what you've been doing. Go into the stitch, pull your yarn through, go through two, that's half of your double completed. And now yarn over and pull through all three stitches. And that is row one completed. You can fasten off here and add a new color if you want to have skinnier stripes. I'm going to continue on here, but I will show you how to change color shortly. And if you're working with self-striping yarn, this is what you would do as well. So to begin row two, chain three and turn. We're getting ready to start our one row repeat. This is the sequence you'll be doing throughout the rest of your project. Super easy. It's exactly the same as what we were just doing. We're just going to be adding the V stitches in different places. We're beginning with a valley again, and that first chain three serves as half of the valley. Now we're going to complete it in this first V stitch. Add a double crochet into the V stitch. And that's all there is to completing that first valley. 
Just like before, we're going to do a V-stitch for the side and then a peak, but we're going to be working into the previous peak. So in that first V area, we'll create our V-stitch. In the middle, we'll create the peak. And then on the third space here, we'll create that other side. So add a V-stitch into that very first space there, or first V from the previous peak. And now in that middle space, we're going to add our peak again. So remember that's four double crochets with a chain in between. One, two, three, and four. Great. Now in that third space there, add your next V-stitch. So, so far we've done our valley, our side, peak, side, and now it's time for our valley again. To create our next valley, you will never be working into the previous valley. You'll always be working into the V-stitches next to it. So we're going to do the same thing we did before, just working into this V-stitch and this V-stitch. We're doing two doubles together. It's really easy to see where to work here, but sometimes if you're working with a dark color or if you're working a little bit more tightly, it may be a bit tricky to see where these V-stitches are. What I found really helpful is to figure out where my peak is and establish where those three spaces are for my peak. And then I know the V-stitch next to it is where I want to work into. So let's do half of our double first in that first V-stitch. Skip over the valley and work into that next V-stitch, creating half of your double. Pulling through two. Now pull through all three. And there you go. You've created your valley. So now to carry on that sequence, we need to do a side and then our peak. Remember, we're using those three spaces from the previous peak to work into. So in that space one, we create our V stitch. In the middle space, our peak, that's four double crochets with a chain in between. Always double check that you have done four double crochets. You're going to get really fast with this and it'll be very easy to accidentally do three. Trust me on this, I've done it plenty of times. In that next space, it's time to do your next side, a quick V-stitch. And we're back to the valley or our dip again. We're going to do two double crochets together, working into that first V. Pull through, pull through two, skip over the valley, working into that next V available. Go in, pull through, create half of your double again, yarn over and pull through all three loops. Continue over here, V-stitch. Peak. V stitch, and then just continue on with the sequence all the way across. When you come to the end, you'll have something that looks like this. You'll have one remaining V stitch and your side. We're going to finish our last valley. To do this, work half of your double into that V. 
And now to complete, you can either work inside of that space or in the top of that chain. I found it gives a straighter edge if you do work into the top, but it's completely up to you. Yarn over, going into the space or into the top of that chain three. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two to finish that double. And now pull through all three loops. You just completed that half of a valley. To change color, you can just fasten on and then reattach with whatever you want to use. But I like to do this. I like to backtrack a little bit. We have three loops to put back on our hook. Essentially, we're going to finish that final stitch with the new color and begin our next row. Bring in your next color. Pull it through the loops. I like to give one tie. I don't double knot here just in case I make a mistake, but just enough to hold it in place. And now I'm ready for the next row. Chain three, turn, and we're just going to continue on with the same sequence. We need to complete our first valley. So create a double crochet into that first V stitch. And now we're just going to resume creating a V into that first space. Peak. Side. I wanted to show you the valley one more time. It's especially more difficult when you're working on the wrong side. I think it's a little bit harder to see the spaces. Again, just establish where your peak is, the three spaces for that peak, one, two, three, and then you can establish that V stitch there, skipping the valley. And of course, there's my other V stitch. So working to the first V. Skipping the valley or that upside down V. Working in the next available V. Create that half double. Pull through all three. And we're back on track. Let's do that valley one more time. When you come to the end, you'll see a V stitch and then that chain space. Create half of a double into that first V stitch and then either working into the space or into the top of the chain, you're going to create your other half double. And then pull it all together, pulling through all three loops. And then you'll just repeat this row after row until you've completed your project. If you're wanting to replicate the look that I did here, I did two rows in one color, then added one row of a neutral, and then just switched colors. So it was two, one, two, one. So if you love working on ripples, but the drawback to it is having to have that ripply edge and you want a straight effect, I do have a couple of suggestions for you. I have a tutorial for the top as well as the bottom. First, we're going to be working on the top. So when you finish your project, that very last row there, you'll get something that looks like this. We're going to start on the right side over here, fasten on, and we're going to create our chain three just like before. So working into that space, chain three, and we're going to work into that first V stitch as if we're completing that first valley, creating that double crochet, just like we were doing before. And now we're going to work two single crochets working towards that peak. Here's the peak, one, two, three, four. We're going to do two single crochets working towards that peak. Single crochet, single crochet. And now in that peak, we're going to do another single crochet. So essentially when we're working up and down the peaks, we're going to do two single crochets on the side and a single crochet on the peak. So we did our two single crochets on the side. We've done a single into the top of the peak. 
Now we're going to work our way down. You can either go into the top of the stitch or between the stitches, completely up to you. We're just trying to straighten things up. I wasn't exact with this. Okay, so that was peak, two single crochets, and now we're back to our valley. And we're just going to do the valley like we did before, working our two doubles together, working into the two V stitches on the sides. There's half of one, crossing over. We have three loops on our hook. Pull the yarn through all three loops. And now we just did our valley or an upside down V. We're back to a peak. We're just going to add two single crochets to build our way back up. Single, single. And now we're at the peak. So then we do a single into that center. And now we just repeat the sequence. One, two, so we're back to our valley. We're just creating our valleys like we were before, working two doubles together in those side V stitches. Two singles, a single into the top peak. Continue this all the way across, and then when you reach the other side or the end of your row, got two singles to make. And then you're just going to complete the row just like you normally would, creating half of a double. And now in the top of that double or around it, create the other side of that valley. And you're all done. I'll go ahead and add that sequence in the description box below so you can kind of screenshot it just for reference. And now we're going to be doing things in the opposite order. It's the same concept though. It's just going to be in the reverse order. We'll be creating our single crochets and then our valley and then our single crochets. So I'm going to add a single into that very first stitch or space. There's my first single crochet, or you can fasten on with a slip stitch and a chain one. I just did a standing single crochet. I'm going to do a single crochet into the first space, a single crochet into this little hole. And now these two spaces right between that sort of circle center there, I'm going to do the valley two double crochets together. So that's one side, skipping that hole, going into that next space, pull through two, yarn over, pull through all three. I just created a valley. And now in that next space, I'm going to add a single. This space, another single. And here is the peak. I'm just going to add a single crochet here as well. So I just did my single for the peak there, working into that side space, into that little hole, another single. On either side of that big hole, I'm doing my valley. Half of a double on the first side, half of a double on the other side, Pull through all three loops, single into the tiny hole there, single into that space, and I'm back to another peak, and I'm just going to finish doing the same sequence. Okay. 
And then at the end, a final single to pull it all together. I just wanted to add here that this does work up rather tightly so you can either be really loose as you're creating your stitches or add single crochets to help out. But I didn't want to confuse things by adding extra single crochets here and there. I wanted to give you an idea that would give you a consistent stitch count on the top and the bottom. But like I said, if it's working too tightly for you and you're not too worried about stitch count, go ahead and add some singles in there to help loosen things up. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for your likes and your shares. Your support always means the world to me. I'll go ahead and share a couple of other ripples and wave blankets that I really like that I think you'll enjoy.